Mobile County Public Schools presents Homeroom. Hi, and welcome to Homeroom, where we introduce you to the educators and the students who make Mobile County Public Schools the best school system in the nation. I'm your host, Renee Phillips. Today we're going to talk about magnet schools. In Mobile County, we have three elementary magnet schools and four middle school magnet schools, and we're introducing a fifth one this year for next year, Barton Academy. So today we're going to be focusing on the middle school. So joining me right now, I have Andrea Dennis, who is the principal of Phillips Preparatory School, and James Gill, who's the principal of the Denton Magnet School of Technology. So first, a question I get all the time, what is a magnet school? Ms. Dennis? Well, the magnet schools allow us to have an option for our students and parents where we have a very rigorous curriculum and we explore concepts in depth um, and we offer different options to our students, such as Phillips Preparatory where we have the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program. And with the IB program, we're able to offer unique courses like design that you won't see in uh, all of the middle schools. Design is unique to IB, but it is something that's embedded throughout several disciplines. Um, so if students want a challenging curriculum and um, they're able to work and collaborate with other students, um, if they have a mindset of inquiry and a growth mindset, they would be really great candidates for the magnet program. And so each of our magnet schools has a different focus point. And I know, Mr. Gill, it takes a special kid to, to thrive in a magnet school. So what type of student um, applies for a magnet school and does well in a magnet school? Well, I think Ms. Dennis said it uh, correct in that it, it, it offers a challenging curriculum. So a student that is up to that challenge academically, uh, up to that challenge behaviorally, uh, also just putting in the hours. The, you know, with the magnet program, we have to have attendance. We look at academics and we look at behavior through there. Uh, so the, the right student would be one that's self-motivated, one that uh, likes the challenge of the academics. And also it, it didn't magnet with that technology twist that we put on things with the hands-on. So maybe somebody that's looking at coding, robotics, and design elements. Right. And when I get that question from parents about magnet schools, I always say it depends on the personality of your child, because we have schools ranging from art to technology to math and science to IB. So, Ms. Dennis, tell me about Phillips. Well, uh, Phillips Preparatory has a reputation as one of the most outstanding schools in the nation, having uh, been listed in the top 50 middle schools in our country. Uh, we're very proud of our history of excellence and our students really strive to do their best in all that they do. Um, with us offering the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program at Phillips, we are um, instilling a college prep curriculum with our students and we really want them to take on the principles of the IB Learner Profile where they are empowered to become global citizens and um, become inquisitive learners, independent thinkers. Uh, we promote a lot of that, empowering our students to do their best in Excel. Um, with IB, again, one of the standards for IB is the design course in middle school. And the students have 50 hours each year. Um, with design, they are really following the engineering design process of STEM, where they are th considering a problem, and they plan, they investigate, uh, they create and then they evaluate. And that's the cycle that they follow, very much like the scientific method. Um, but what we like to make everyone understand is that those design elements run throughout all of the courses that we offer. So if you are in a language and literature course at Phillips, uh, you're still going to have design elements embedded. If you're creating your research paper, you're going to uh, consider your thesis, come up with that, and then you're going to continue to plan, conduct your research, investigate. Uh, you're going to have your different drafts, which is um, where you are actually creating your product. And then you evaluate it. Um, with band, you're doing the same thing with design elements. If you are um, arranging music and composing your own music, that's design every day. So we want everyone to know that with IB and design, uh, it goes kind of hand in hand with STEM and the engineering design process, but it's something that's going to be standard in all of our courses. When I think of IB, I think of high schools, right? We have two IB International Baccalaureate High Schools in Mobile County, that's Murphy and Davidson, and you're really preparing the students for that, which prepares them for college and they can earn college credit, correct? So is it is a good association being with IB? 
Absolutely. Um, and at Phillips, our students are able to earn credits that they take to high school in algebra as well as foreign languages. And currently, the foreign languages that we're offering are French, Spanish, German, and Latin. Um, so our students have the ability to take some coursework that's going to go on their transcript when they move on to high school. But it's absolutely a college prep course, but it's something that's going to prepare them for the rigorous IB curriculum, uh, specifically at our two high schools, Murphy and Davidson, that have an IB program at the high school level. But uh, anywhere they go, they're going to be in, in a position to be really successful because of the foundation that they're receiving at Phillips. Right, and I love that, that worldly, global focus. You're preparing them for college and life and beyond, um, and it really is a world-class school at Phillips. Um, we're about to break for commercial, but when we come back, we're going to learn more about Denton Magnet School of Technology and the other magnet middle schools that we have in Mobile County Public Schools. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-aged children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. Welcome back to Homeroom. Today we're learning about our middle school magnet schools in Mobile County. Currently we have four and we're adding a fifth. Joining me on this segment, I have Andrea Dennis from Phillips Preparatory School and James Gill from the Denton Magnet School of Technology. And Denton is our newest. Um, what have you been around for about four years or so now? Or? We're going into our fifth year this year. Okay, and tell us about Denton. Well, Denton is, like, she, like you said, is, is the smallest of the uh, magnet schools and the newest of the magnet schools and so uh, our focus has been uh, hands-on uh, applied technology so if you if your child's interested in robotics and, and interested in design elements and inter interested in engineering even into the business area side of developing websites uh, Denton is a, is a great place for your child to start uh, that pathway and speaking of pathways we structure our electives so they they work in sync so that as the child, your child comes in in the sixth grade, gets exposed to a number of different electives, and then is able to build on that knowledge throughout that, uh, his or her time at the magnet school. I think that's one thing about Denton that's interesting are the elective courses that the students get to take. They almost sound like college courses. Can you tell me about those? Well, you're, uh, in sixth grade, most everyone will start with design and modeling. That's where they'll get the basics of engineering process. They'll get the basics of robotics. Uh, some of the basics in uh, in the coding pr uh, areas and then they'll move on to automation robotics in their second year and then by their third year you're looking at classes that are physics based with science of technology or science of flight where they're taking those engineering elements and, and, and coming to a full uh, grasp of them uh, even in the uh, computer languages they may start off with some very basic block code and by their uh, third year that they're learning some of the advanced computer languages and applying those into the various websites and uh, programs that they're working with. So they are diving deep into that science and that technology. Do they have to have a good base in science and technology before they come or can they just get that while they're there? They'll get that while they're there. What we look for is a student that's willing to uh, challenge him or herself so that they're wanting to learn uh, that process and go through that process. Uh, they need to be able to work with others, but also independently uh, so that they can get the, the most out of those classes. And it's more than just computers, correct? Like you're applying the technology, the computers to real world problems. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, they may, in our graphic arts program, they may learn the basics of some design elements in there. Uh, but we've had a number of students that have went on with the graphic arts and they have started their own uh, internet business because in some of their other courses, they may be learning the basics for uh, for website development, for app development. And so with some of the students, whether it's marketing of soaps that they come up with themselves or in the graphic arts, they come up with their own designs and they'll, and they'll market those through the internet process for t-shirts or for cups and tumblers. So it gives the students a good grasp of not only the design and the engineering, but also on the business side of actually applying that in the real world setting. 
And I know so much of what we do in our magnet schools and all of our schools is focusing on the academics, but we also focus on those extracurriculars and community service projects, those sort of things to make students more well-rounded. So um, Ms. Dennis, can you tell me about Phillips and what do you offer students an opportunity to do there? Well, we have a pretty robust uh, group of clubs and organizations for our students. Um, I spearhead the Principal's uh, Student Advisory Council, where I have a group of students who work with me to consider ways to improve our school uh, and serve as the voice of the student body. Uh, so they'll meet with the principal, and um, we have an opportunity this year to meet with some of our students because they are home virtually and some face-to-face. Um, to just kind of plan and think and improve our program at Phillips. Uh, we also have the National Junior Honor Society. Uh, we have lots of student clubs and organizations, anime, um, a lot of things that students, depending on their interest, can join so that they have a group, a cohort of students that they work with um, who have similar interests. We also have a pretty uh, big sports program, athletic program. We do offer um, soccer, baseball, football, volleyball, cheerleading, uh, and many more. So we are really looking forward to the day when we can fully implement all of our clubs and organizations and athletics, but we're trying to be creative and innovative in the way that uh, we can still engage the students, even if we can't do it in the manner to which we're accustomed. So that's right, with the COVID pandemic, we've had to adjust and some of those extracurricular activities are on hold right now. But Mr. Gill, tell me about what you offer at Denton. Well, just as Ms. Dennis said, that in the magnet program, you can usually find something for every child in the magnet program. Uh, at Denton in specific, even with the technology base, uh, we encourage students not only to have their programming clubs and their coding clubs and their engineering clubs, it may even be something as simple as a Rubik's Cube club. Uh, at Denton, if the student with a number of other students can find a sponsor, uh, they can have the flexibility to start clubs and end clubs throughout the, the course of the school year. Uh, we offer a wide range of athletic programs. Uh, we've got archery uh, that has been very successful this year uh, and in the past years, and we're, we're bringing it back for the next year. Uh, this year coming up, we have Naval ROTC. We'll be the only uh, middle school in the, in the county that will offer a high school credit for Naval ROTC, which is one of the uh, additional uh, perks to being near a high school that has a successful ROTC program. But in addition to that, you can also have high school credit in uh, algebra and biology. So we give them a good foundation academically for the high school, but also those perks of those extra clubs and activities that really is the, why the student wants to come to a, to a magnet school and put up with that academic rigor. Uh, they get the fun things of those extra clubs for them. So I love what I'm hearing. The magnet schools offer that focused academic curriculum for our students, as well as opportunities to become well-rounded and to find things that they're interested in and can excel in. So um, we're about to break for commercial, and when we come back, I'm gonna tell you more about our magnet schools and introduce you to the principles of Clark and Dunbar. So stay tuned. When it comes to getting your child through school, at times it can be overwhelming. What school to choose, what classes to take, how to apply for college. To help answer these questions and more, we would like to invite you to join us on Parent Connect as we take an in-depth look at some of the issues and concerns you may have about your child's education. So get connected with Parent Connect, weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. Welcome back to Homeroom. Today we're learning about the magnet school program that we have in Mobile County Public Schools. As you may know, we have three elementary magnet schools and four middle schools. We are also introducing a fifth magnet school, the Barton Academy for Advanced World Studies, which will open in August of 2021. We've heard from the principals at Phillips Preparatory and the Denton Magnet School of Technology. And now joining me, I have the principals of the Clark Shaw School of Math, Science and Technology. That's Mary DiVincenzo. And then I have the principal of the Dunbar School for Creative and Performing Arts, Ms. Tamisha Taylor. So, hello. Um, what do you love about being a principal of a magnet school? Mrs. D? Being the principal of a magnet school is an amazing opportunity. When you think of magnet schools, you think of diversity. 
Our populations are made up of uh, an eclectic group from all over Mobile County. Uh, a lot of students who are willing to push uh, themselves rigorously and academically uh, as well as creatively. Um, so I just love the fact that we are very diverse in our curriculum, our electives, and our overall student body. So they're extremely unique environments within the Mobile County Public School System. So Ms. Taylor, what about you? What do you like being about, about being principal at the Performing Arts School? I love the opportunity to work with students from all over the district. Um, and the ability and the opportunity to expose them to the arts. Um, some of the students come to us and they know nothing about fine arts and some of them know everything about fine arts because they've been in dance or they take gymnastics or they're already in a strings program where they're playing with um, mobile pops or they're singing with someone and so the opportunity to expose them to a different level of fine arts activities is a wonderful thing for them. Also those kids who have not been exposed to see the, the, their li eyes light up when they have the opportunity to learn something new, it is amazing. Um, and the opportunity to integrate the arts into every academic class. So we are actually kind of tricking kids into learning academics through the arts. It is a wonderful opportunity. Um, and so I am just eternally grateful that I am able to work at Dunbar and to touch lives every day. I love that. And then each of our magnet schools is so different. And you two in this segment, you have your science and technology on one hand and your arts on the other, two very different types of students who excel in those. So Mrs. D, tell me about Clark Shaw. What type of students go there and, and what do they learn when they get there? Well, Clark Shaw is an academically outstanding school. We are a two-time national blue ribbon school, at Alabama Bicentennial School of Excellence. And we are the first Mobile County school who has received Cognia STEM accreditation, the first magnet school in the state to receive school-wide STEM accreditation. Our focus is on math, science, and technology, so we offer all of those with a STEM-based program. Uh, our students have the opportunity to achieve a biology credit for high school, a foreign language credit, either in French or Spanish. Uh, we are offering German this year as just an enrichment class, um, as well as an algebra credit. So we have advanced mathematics, advanced sciences, and we also have a lot of STEM-based technology. Um, we work through Project Lead the Way, which is STEM, uh, all the way where students um, learn the design and engineering process. They work with technology, they've done coding, I know in one of our biomedical technology classes, design and modeling, the students actually study orthopedics, biomedical technology, develop an orthopedic boot. So there's a lot of hands-on and real-world experience um, at our school. Uh, we also have a variety of athletics. We have lots of clubs based from Eagle Wings, which is community-based service to um, disc golf on Tuesdays. Um, as well as Scholars Bowl and other academic type clubs. I think we offer about 16 to 18 different clubs after school and we have an aftercare program so we try to meet the needs of the whole child in many areas and prepare them for the 21st century. When you talk about the classes you offer and the opportunities, orthopedics, those sorts of things, it's so amazing. It sounds more like a college campus than it does a, a middle school. It's amazing. Um, how big of a deal was it for you guys to get that STEM certification? Because you said you were the first one in the area? Yes, the first Mobile County School to be STEM accredited. It's about a year long process. Um, it's very much like any other uh, certifications or accreditations where you do a self study um, and then you have to um, look inward as far as what you are providing for your students. Being STEM accredited, it is science, technology, engineering, and math and you have to show that you are doing um, all of those, not just in a program-based certification would be if you just offer the classes. A school-wide certification is you are doing it across the board everywhere. Um, so we did the self-study, we did an analysis, you create a website, um, and uh, then a team from the Cognia group comes and they actually go into the classrooms, they question community members, parents, uh, students, they um, use a form called the Elliot to actually do the classroom observations and do a scoring. Um, and they were in our school for three days. And you're so. very STEM focused, but I've been around your school and you've had that um, 
bicentennial designation and that history. Your students have marched across yes. the Edmund Pettus Bridge. So it's, it's not just math and science, it's also other things as well. So tell me about that. Yeah, so our Bicentennial Project was amazing. We actually have a living history wall where a lot of our students did um, video interviews with family members on the history and they posted all of those to a YouTube channel. There are QR codes up in the hallways where you can see several of those. Um, and we encourage every single year our new sixth graders coming in to learn about that living history. Um, anytime anything can come alive for students, especially in middle school where the brain is really starting to hardwire and the students are learning who they are and what they may want to do with their lives and what they're interested in, you have to provide opportunities. So we want opportunities not just in the classroom that are real world, we want opportunities outside of the classroom that are real world. And that's why we try to involve ourselves in the community and throughout the state as well, throughout the school year, so that our students have those opportunities. And that's what's great about all of our magnet schools. They provide our students with those unique opportunities to find their niche and to be successful. We've got a break for commercial, but when we come back, we're going to learn more about the Dunbar School for Creative and Performing Arts, and we're going to let you know how you can apply for magnet school. So stay tuned. Hello, I'm Polina Tyler. I would like to invite you to join me for Inside Education. Come with us as we take a look at what's happening around Mobile County Public Schools, as well as what's happening in your child's classroom. That's Inside Education, right here on the MCPSS TV Network. When parents are involved in school, you get more of this, and less of this. Welcome back to Homeroom. Today we're learning about our middle school magnet schools. Now we've heard from Phillips Preparatory, Denton Magnet School of Technology, and Clark Shaw School of Math, Science, and Technology. And now I want to learn more about the Dunbar School for Creative and Performing Arts. So I've got Ms. Taylor joining us today. Now your current build, or your downtown building is under some renovations right now. You're in a temporary location on Azalea Road, but you'll be back downtown for um, August when the school year starts. So tell me about the program there. I love going to Dunbar. You're singing, you're dancing, you're performing. Tell us about it. Yes, um, kind of like when you came out earlier this week and checked out the building. One thing that um, is hindering us right now is that we're in a temporary location. Um, so we're kind of crippled when it comes to some of the things that we, tip, that we normally do throughout the school day. However, in our other location, our, my fine arts teachers had relatively large classrooms. We had two dance studios. We were able to provide two band areas. So we had a band room and a strings room. Uh, we had a large drama studio. I had a TV broadcasting area where my students were able to do live newscasts and were able to do some recordings. When we do our performances, I have a background crew who does that. They record all of the performances for us. Um, so when it comes to the location where we are now, it is a bit smaller, so we are handicapped a little bit when it comes to some of the things that we can do. However, we are the fine arts program and we are adjusting and we're making it work. Um, and some of the things that we do, um, as I mentioned, we offer every fine arts program. So when, we talk, when we're talking about fine arts, we're talking about arts, music, uh, dance, drama, and then we break it down into different categories. So if your child does not know anything about uh, dancing or they're not very uh, knowledgeable about music or they have never played an instrument, come to Dunbar, we can help you with that. We offer the introductory classes and we progress throughout and you can get to the audition classes as well. So not only can your child start with dance one, we progress through dance one, intermediate dance, all the way to company. Um, so in every arts area, there is an advanced group where you have to audition. With those classes, they work, they work hand in hand with the academic teachers to create arts integration. And that is what I was speaking of earlier. So you have a student who takes dance and they may be in band. And when we get to algebra class, you're wondering, what are we doing with these algebra problems? I am never going to use algebra because that's what middle school kids say, until you relate it to the fact that you have to have numbers, you have to have count, you need this for music, you need this for dance, you use the same thing when you're playing music or when you're dancing. Um, and once you make that relationship known to a child, they understand. Um, so we offer all of those areas as well as 
academically, you have to keep up. You have to maintain your um, magnet status, and we offer advanced courses as well. And like the other magnet schools, we have the same requirements, and we offer accelerated classes or advanced classes. You can also leave with a high school credit. Uh, we offer the same thing when it comes to your foreign languages and when it comes to math. So you have that opportunity to earn credit when you leave or before you leave to go to high school. Um, and I guess another misconception that people may have, you know, because I hear my counterparts saying, you have, your people are happy all the time. We're just singing and dancing down the halls all the time. But in order to stay singing and dancing down those halls, you must maintain the same thing. You must maintain your averages. You must maintain your grade points. You must maintain, uh, have a nice discipline area um, record. And you must also come to school. Um, and so when you look at those areas, that is how those advanced groups are able to go out and perform. We, we perform throughout the city. We perform state to state. We do a lot of traveling. We go to Gatlinburg and perform in contests. We go to Disney and, and perform in some things. Um, the band travels to Auburn. We go different places depending on the groups. Um, so once you select your track, your fine arts track, that's where you'll remain through seventh and eighth grade and you'll eventually get to the audition group and you travel to represent the school. So hopefully you'll make the decision to come to Dunbar because even though we're singing and dancing, we are still listed on your top schools in the state and in your top schools in Mobile County as well. We're with the magnet schools. That's right. So we have so many creative students in Mobile County and it is so great when we can see them perform on a stage, whether it be dancing or singing or acting. And Dunbar is a very special place. But like you said, it also emphasizes the academics, as all of our magnet schools do. Um, and it does show that if you are successful on a stage and in drama and that sort of thing, you're also successful academically. Um, and so this year, though, with the COVID-19 pandemic, y'all are having to do the recruiting a little differently. So can you tell me about that? You can't do the in-person tours, but Mrs. D, what are you doing at Clark to um, draw students in and, and to have them apply? Well, actually, um, we are right now in the middle of um, revamping our uh, introductory video and promo video on our website to offer virtual tours of the building. Uh, we will be including uh, two videos for um, virtual tours, one pretty much talking about the Clark Shaw program in itself, and the other with the focus on STEM that we have that includes a lot of the video footage that we utilize when we got our STEM accreditation. Of course, you can find out lots and lots about Clark Shaw through our Magnet School website and as well as our Facebook page and then we are offering our parents the ability to call and talk to counselors uh, and we will be providing brochures to all of our fifth grade students throughout Mobile County so that they have an idea of what our program is and how it um, is going to be offered but right now it will be virtual tours um, with questions answers and follow-up with brochures so that we can keep everyone informed on what's going on behind those walls and in speaking with your colleagues at all the other magnet schools they're saying similarly that they will be offering virtual tours their promotional videos so for example you can see some of the arts and the dancing at, at Dunbar and, and the, the phenomenal work that they do and also um, please if you're interested in a magnet school follow your schools um, websites, follow their Facebook pages. The window to apply will be open from November 2nd until December 4th. You can go to mcpss.com for more information on all eight of our magnet schools. What we encourage you to do is to look at them, consider them, consider what's best for your child and his or her personality. Call the school, visit them virtually, and apply for the one that's best for you. Thank you so much for joining us today for Homeroom. Mm -hmm.